I'm an artist and adventurer from the UK, currently talking from Italy, but I create illustrations and murals, including the Tough Girl mural, um, and I do that with the aim to uplift, inspire, empower, and celebrate women. But basically, I'm trying to spread my joy for life, one splash of colour at a time with my artwork, but those things those joys come from different things I've experienced in life. So whether that's travel, living in different countries or moving my body. Um, I love to run, hike, swim uh, and taking on different challenges. So over the years, I've done half marathons, a marathon with no training, scuba diving and a ski season in Canada. So actually, I... For this, I had a little look and it turns out I've actually done a different challenge every year since 2010 without really realising it. They've all been physical challenges, but for me, it really invigorates me to do something where I love moving my body in different ways. And like with your podcast, I really just want to encourage other women to move their body in whatever, whatever way that they enjoy and to really follow their passions and curiosity. And I guess I'm a creative explorer is what I would call myself. Oh, I love that. A creative explorer. And I love the words that you use as well, you know, joy for life and wanting to uplift and inspire women and girls. And have you always had this passion for sort of art and adventure? Was that, did, is this something that you recognised from sort of an early age? Yeah, I always knew I was creative. I always drew, kind of, I think I got the creative side from my mum and the adventure side from my dad. So mum would kind of always be like doing something with fabrics or she taught me to draw and encouraged me on that side. Like I joined pottery class when I was younger and and then, well, dance class. I don't know who encouraged that, but I did every dance class possible when I was a child. Taps, Highland dancing, uh, modern um, hip hop I think that was all, that was all when I was a child um, and then my dad was a runner uh, he didn't get into running until he was 40 but they had me at that age so for me he's always been a runner and I we always used to go to see him run the Great North Run and he was kind of you know always out training because he was doing marathons and he was doing I don't know some big run and there was a smaller 5k and I don't know maybe I was about eight or something and um, apparently my mum isn't as adventurous I said I really wanted to do it so she had to do it because (laughs) I was too small so we walked it together and it was kind of you know that way done the adventure rather than actual running. Was it hard when you were sort of maybe in like your teenage years when maybe people were choosing what they wanted to do with their career and the future? There's almost this pressure maybe to get in air quotes a normal job. Like, did you feel that pressure as like a teenager, maybe after doing your exams and deciding whether or not you wanted to go into university? Completely. Like, I I love this question that you've asked asked this because I think it's so important to get that message across to teenagers now because I feel like the pressure is probably even bigger I'm 31 and so back then it was um yeah I was really good at school so like I loved it I think it's for me I'm so curious and I think like studying followed that curiosity so I, I was actually quite good at all subjects but I always knew I wanted to do art and I do think this is where sometimes the teachers make a difference because you know they were asking me like are you going to go science way are you going to go creative way because I'd got good grades in everything at GCSE level which is kind of that point at the teenage point where you're like stressing what's next but this is also the time when I really got into running so I don't know if that helped me like know my own brain but um I knew I wanted to do art but I had to find like an actual proper career like you said so I was like, I'll do fashion. Like as a teenage girl, of course, that's the language you speak in, clothes, shopping. And that's kind of how I knew my friends would communicate with clothes, if that makes sense, in terms of that being more of a proper job than an artist. It's almost Um, like more acceptable, isn't it? Like, oh, I'm going, yeah, I'm going into fashion, not art, which could be seen as, oh, it's very high, high risk almost. Exactly. And I actually didn't even really think that an artist was a career then either properly, if I'm honest. But I just knew I loved art at school. Our school was just art. There wasn't design. There was technology, but 
I yeah just did painting drawing experimenting and my art teacher really like helped me embrace that she let me do everything and like if I like my pictures weren't pretty pictures so you know there'd be someone else in the class that would be like oh they're really good because everyone who comes in you know that's not interested in art likes their pictures but mine was really about the process on how I got to that point with my work and I really enjoyed that exploring of the subject and getting to know more but I decided I wanted to do be a fashion designer quite early on like before you pick the A-levels and um, that was yeah that part of the pressure of I have to have a proper career. My mum was a midwife, my dad is in the military and my brother's in the military. So they all had proper jobs. <laughs> so me being creative, I had to find a, a proper way to do that. So I was like, you know, did all my research. Fashion designer is a proper job. If I go to this university, I'll get a good degree, I'll get a good job and all that. So that was the path that I thought I was going to lead. Yeah, I did A-levels and still, yeah, art kind of took over everything else. And I decided that I wanted to go to do fashion design at Northumbria Uni. I'd actually been when, at the age of 16 to Central St. Martins, knowing that that was the best place to go for fashion for a week course to try it out because, well, my parents let me. I went to London for the week by myself, which was great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that really opened my eyes because they were like, we're not going to teach you. You have to basically survival of the fittest at this at this uni and I was like but I don't know anything about fashion design like I actually want to learn like I don't have the skills already and that really kind of all of these things I kind of just always followed what I knew about myself and my curiosity so I went to study at Northumbria University because they were the best outside of London and I thought it'd be a better experience and I also joined the officer training corps there so at the weekend I'd be running around the field um, in camouflage and during the weekday weekday I'll be in the studio doing fashion design so yeah it's kind of a, kind of where my contrast in my creative and my adventure side really flourished so amazing that you're getting to to follow your passions both of your passions your love for creativity but also your love for the for the outdoors did you struggle after university in terms of what direction to take whether or not you were going to I, mean, I don't know if you you would have continued down like the officer route into the army and follow your dad or did you did you want to take a gap year or were you yeah what what happened next like having to make the next sort of step in the direction of your career I knew I didn't want to join the army even joining the officer training corps because I'd done um cadets when I was younger as well that kind of took over from dance I guess <laughs> um and so I did cadets and knowing I wanted to do the officer training and obviously that was way more intense than the the cadets. Um, So I knew I wanted to do the officer training corps. I don't know whether it was out of curiosity or the challenge, but I so enjoyed it and it was one of my best bits about uni and I really created the kind of strength and friendships there and it taught me a lot of the skills that I later took into kind of more adventure lifestyle leadership team spirit and grit and determination so I'm so glad of that but I knew I didn't want to join the military but all the skills were really useful from that anyway and then yeah so obviously as I kind of said I kind of always followed what my curiosity is to go on to the next step and for me I kind of finished uni and I was like they're teaching us to either be a catwalk designer or a high street designer but neither of them feel like me. So I went to this talk of this woman who was talking about fashion becoming part of the body. And for me, I think it's the interest in the body, which fits with the adventure side of moving the body that really like strikes the passion in me. So I was so interested by what she was saying, kind of how technology was coming part of the body, which sounds bizarre, I know, but the way that it's going. And um, so she had a master's course at Kingston University and I applied for their part-time so I could work and do the course and this kind of opened up a whole other side for me with that like I didn't know anybody who was a fashion designer so that first when even just going to do fashion design was different from uh, the other people that I knew but then going to do the master's course I ended up joining an entrepreneur program so they have that at Kingston University because there's a big business school there but I didn't know anybody that did business and nobody on the fashion floor was doing 
um, entrepreneur skills. So I joined their program and really learned kind of business skills and creating your own path and creating your own job and this sort of side of it while I was studying the master's and I was working as a bridal consultant. So it was kind of the bridal consultant job was so interesting for me. I'm, I'm not interested in weddings, <laughs> but I, for me, my angle is, I guess, that uh, it's meant to be the day where you like feel your best, but brides a lot don't know their bodies or they don't know, they're not confident in their body. And so actually one of the jobs was to really get to know my client, the bride, and how they feel about the body and what they want to highlight with the dress and what kind of their unique style was and trying to find a match with the dress. So that's kind of like where I came for it. And also, I um, the question I asked everyone is where are you going on the honeymoon? <laughs> because I love to travel <laughs> and we had brides coming from all over the world. So they were going to all different places around the world. So that really intrigued me. And then on the master's side, it was a really free course, kind of what I said earlier about you're, you're left to your own devices. And we collaborated with like scent companies, eco companies, and all different kinds of things. So the briefs were really different to what we did with fashion design. It was called Masters in Fashion. And a lot of people ended up creating something that was what you'd say pure fashion. But I did a module and I ended up doing a spray paint mural and um then I did another project that was like interdisciplinary design and so it kind of really opened up to me all the areas of creativity and so I kind of followed that path and that with the entrepreneur program basically I'm trying to say what the next part of my my life went when because it kind of opened up these ideas and thoughts about creating your own thing I actually ended up creating a fashion brand that was inspired by the city girl that loves adventure. But I actually decided that is not what I want to do. I want the adventure. So I booked a one way ticket to Australia and moved there. Oh, I love it. Amazing. <laughs> no, no, but, but thank you for it. I think it's really important to learn more about sort of, you know, the different journeys, the different pathways that people can end up taking, you know, going to this talk, hearing this, this lecturer speak and then being inspired to go and join her, her master's program and then, you know, being exposed to more, you know, to, to more entrepreneurs and the business world and, and the different options available to you. And then also figuring out what it is that you want to do, what are your passions and what are your interests. And, you know, for you, that was the travel side and the adventure and that one way ticket to Australia. What happened in Australia? How was that? Was that six six months farming in the back country? <laughs> I did actually do some farming. I was a very good Kiwi pruner that I got um not upgraded, I got promoted to supervisor. So <laughs> I think I think that was my pattern cutting skills, being meticulous with where the lines of the vines went, uh, really helped me be a farmer. Um <laughs> so yeah exactly what you said I really think kind of a, a lot of people create their own identity and then they feel like they have to stick to it and for me that's what I was the creative one I was the fashion person you know of all my friends that was you know what I was concentrating so much on that even though I'd kept this adventure side throughout I had kind of you know always like I need to learn more about des design about fashion about trends like I was so interested in that part because that's the, where I thought my path was going to go. But as I got further and further along, I learned so much along the way, but I knew it wasn't what I wanted to do. I didn't want to be stressing over seam lines. So I kind of was like, no, I want adventure and we'll figure out the next from here. And it took a while to kind of admit to like, no, I'm not going to go back to fashion. That's not for me because I'd created this identity. But it's really funny talking to people I've met along the way. So I've had people, you know, that I've lived in quite a few countries since then. So after Australia, I ended up living in Canada and then I ended up living in Italy. And people I've met along the way know me by different identities as in like, oh, you just always love to travel. And they just know that side. And oh, I didn't know you could draw or I didn't know that you'd done fashion like and it all depended on at what point that they met me to what they thought that I was if you know what I mean you know you've talked about your 
your love of adventure and travel, I'd love you to share maybe what's your your definition of adventure? What does adventure mean to you? For me, it'd be following your curiosity and being amazed by the different paths you can create. So for adventure, for me, it could be something as easy as when I was living in Florence, I wanted to go for a run, but I didn't want to do my usual route. So I thought, oh, there's a town that I've been to on the bus. Do you think I can run there? And that's an adventure for that day. It could equally be booking a one-way ticket to Australia and living there for a year. But all of these things are really kind of about looking at the place or the way you move through it with open eyes. Why do you challenge yourself? How do you challenge yourself? For people who maybe aren't as good at saying yes and taking those types of risks, what advice would you have for them? Take small steps and take it one step at a time. Every person that's done something, say, bigger than what you have, like there's so many women that you've had on this podcast that have done huge challenges and you could look at what I've done and be like, well, you couldn't get to that. But I know that they've done the same sort of thing that I have if you're the person listening who hasn't done many challenges or adventures and you're sitting there thinking, well, how am I going to run to the next town? Like, that sounds impossible. I can only run 100 metres. But it all builds. The more you do one step, it opens up another step. It's the same with opportunities. Once you open one door, there's going to be another one. It might not be straight away. It might be further down the line. But by taking those steps and going outside of your comfort zone, it opens up the world to be bigger. And like when you were saying before, kind of how my path by hearing this person talk or uh, talking to this person about a different way that they live life, it opens up your eyes to know that there's so many different routes you can take. And it's the same even on a run. You know, the same person could do the same point to point, but the route that they take can be, can be completely different. The speed they do it can be completely different. What they're wearing can be completely different. But you've done it in your way from A to B. So don't compare yourself to the way that somebody else has done it. You follow your curiosity and see how you can get there one step at a time. I always think that about like marathons when you know especially like for example like on the London marathon when you're at the start line and you look around you you know there's 38 to 40 odd thousand people all shapes and sizes all wearing different socks different trainers different gear yeah obviously everybody everybody's got there but they've all run their own journey trained their own way and you know nine times out of ten they're gonna get round they're gonna finish the marathon and so it's never like you say it's never about comparison it is about following your curiosity and I know that your curiosity has has led you to live this to live this very nomadic lifestyle and like how many countries have you lived and worked in now well I lived in different countries as a child with my parents my dad was in the military so we moved around and so we lived in we moved to Cyprus when I was six months old and then we moved to Germany different places back in the UK and then Belgium And then in my adult life, I moved to France, the south of France, where I learned to surf, and then um, Australia, and Canada, and then Italy. So it's kind of, I like to spend a good amount of time living and working in that place really opens up different opportunities and different ways to explore. And so I really like basing myself. So I know it's not the finish. I'm going to live in other countries as the world starts opening back up again and um yeah I've I've based myself in other places longer like a month in Bali or a month in Serbia um so in between kind of moving countries and things like that as well and I've been to almost 40 countries now but I'm not trying to tick them off like is a bucket list I'm trying to get to every country that's not the way I'm doing it it's more if there's the opportunity like I went to hike the peaks of the Balkans and so that was going for my first time in Albania, Kosovo, Montenegro and then while I was there I was like well I might as well stay another week and go to North Macedonia and so for me kind of it is that opportunity to once you're based yourself somewhere else 
it opens up other places to be closer to you and different challenges and different places you can see. So when you do get to a new city, what's your method for exploring? Do you have a method? Do you have a process of, you know, how you get to to know a new place? I love walking. Like, you know that meme where it's like everyone's got one friend that says they can walk there. <laughs> yeah. It's like from one place. <laughs> I'm tagged in that because <laughs> I will walk the whole day. And so I'll get to a place and, you know, I have a few places starred on Google or I'll get a map from the local information point and I will try and walk like the whole of that city in the day to get my bearings of where everything is and see as much as possible that's what I love about walking is you might be headed to one place but see something out the corner of your eye and then go down a different path and discover something new that you weren't expecting on the way to the thing that you wanted to go to Tell us a little bit more about walking in the peaks of is it, of the albums. Where did you walk? The peaks of the Balkans. Peaks of the bulk of the albums. <laughs> <laughs> peaks of the Balkans. Yeah, tell us more about that experience. Was was that solo? Was that in a group? Like, what sort of distance were you covering? Were um, what were the were you camping? Were you staying in huts? You know, how did that work? So it was a group trip. I was at the time a trip manager um, for Kentucky in Italy, based in Italy. And it was an email through from them, actually, that sparked that curiosity. And it was a group of trip managers who were from the different companies, Kentucky, Trafalgar. And they had walked the last two years, two different walking challenges. And they did Everest and they... um, did in Australia from like Brisbane to Sydney or something and it was all to raise money for the charity walker and oh sorry for the charity water and the group called themselves walkers for water and I saw that they were going on this trip at the end of October this was back in 2019 and if anybody wanted to join they want to expand their group so it was kind of through work that I found out about it but I actually didn't know any of the people on it but my usual thing is to call up one of the girls and ask anybody want to come along and quite often I am by myself and do a lot of these trips by myself but um one of my friends said yes and I don't think she'd ever done that much hiking in her life um I'm not sure she's going to do it again but um she came along and absolutely nailed it but It was a group of us, all trip managers, and we started in Albania. So that was the first time I met them all at the airport. Because as a trip manager, even if you work with one company, there's so many of you, you don't really meet each other unless you've been doing it for years because you all run your own trip. And so, yeah, I'd never met any of them. And then we had a local guide with us, and which is quite interesting to have a group of trip managers be guided. But we did it with a local company out there and so we started in Albania and we walked kind of up every day and down every night and so it was the longest I'd actually done it's 10 days and I hadn't actually ever done that long hiking especially mountain peaks but I didn't really think about it like you said before I kind of was just so like oh that sounds great and then like Google peaks of the Balkans I was like wow it's so pretty (laughs) And um, and I was like, yeah, I'll do that for this. Like I said before, I kind of ended up doing a challenge every year without realising it. And this year I hadn't done any physical challenge, like a particular, you know, one challenge. And so I was like, oh, it's almost the end of the year. I better get in my challenge then. And, yeah, it was absolutely amazing. I did a bit of training in Italy before, and it's very down the south of Italy. I did the Path of the Gods as my training which was incredible and um it blew me away I'd never been to any of the Balkan countries before and we stayed at locals in the mountains their houses so they would cook us a dinner on the night and you know they didn't speak any English but they were so welcoming and it was so interesting to kind of get to know their culture and find some of these houses that were in the middle of the mountains in the middle of nowhere And they had, you know, this huge feast for us. And, yeah, it was so interesting. So, yeah, no, it wasn't camping. I do love camping. But um, it was in houses in the mountains. 
Oh, fantastic. I'd love you to share. Was there like a magical moment or a big challenge that you had to overcome during that trip? There was one day I was absolutely boiling. Like I love hot temperatures Um, and it was the end of October and we'd been told to pack thermals and long sleeve tops. And so we had a, we carried everything on our back for the whole time. And um, yeah, I had hardly packed any t-shirt. I packed one t-shirt, I think, or something. And we're hiking every day and it was like 25 degrees every day. <laughs> so I was in basically my shorts and t-shirt the whole time instead of my leggings and my long sleeve. Um, they, they said it was, you know, uncharacteristically hot that year because some of the streams we went to to refill our water were actually dried up as well. Um, and we didn't see any other, tour- we saw four tourists the whole time on the trails because it was the end of the season. So a lot of people that had come through had already done that hike and there's lots of different trails in the area as well. Um, and so there was a, a, in the odd place, like little huts that they were still open where they sold like a slice of cake. And you're like, I'm in the middle of nowhere here. <laughs> and <laughs> somehow I've managed to get this coffee and cake um and the biggest challenge yeah was I guess just one day I was absolutely boiling and I'm a very sweaty person like you'll see me red faced um I love I love the warrior braids like you wear Sarah because they hide the sweat more in your hair (laughs) and (laughs) and um it was just like there was just one day where because every morning we were kind of in the valley of the mountain and you'd see the shadow of the mountain that you were climbing that day and so quite often first thing in the morning it'd be straight up and this day um there was an angry farmer and the guy told us this guy always shouts at anyone who goes past um beware be an angry farmer get up this hill as fast as you can and so we were all prepared and ready for this guy to shout at us in a language we didn't understand and um we were also like all wearing matching t-shirts that day which were black um which was a really bad choice of color in the sunshine and so I just remember getting after running up this like vertical hill with all my kit on first thing in the morning and we got halfway up and I was just like usually I'm very smiley very bubbly even if you know I'm sweating and it's hard um but this time I wasn't and someone was like you're right I was like yes I'll be fine I want to cool down a bit (laughs) but for me it was more I hadn't really done that many uphills or mountains in a row and so every day was a challenge but I love hills and I know a lot of people don't but I love hills and mountains because there's always a great view and that always gets me through and through this hike the views were spectacular, like better than I ever imagined, because if the time of year we went was October, so all the trees were turning yellow. So it was just this beautiful scenery that we had kind of all to ourselves. And I remember at one point walking through the forest, so it wasn't even the view of the mountain, which is usually my favourite panorama view is my favourite. But you're just walking through kind of this archway of yellow trees and there was no one else but us there. And it was just really awe-inspiring. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And do you want to share your Instagram handle? And maybe just also, I can't pronounce it. That's why I can't say it yeah. out loud. <laughs> and then do you want to do you want to share more um, about what's behind the name? I've got two Instagrams. One's my creative side and one's my explorer side. So the explorer side inspires the drawing side. So I'm Nochola the drawer and Nochola the explorer. And is nocciola because nocciola is hazelnut in Italian and when I moved to Italy I was working as a trip manager and so I was always talking with Italians I didn't speak any Italian when I moved here and they I didn't realize that in Italian my name was really complicated they don't have a h so every time I introduce myself ciao chiamo hazel they look at me strange and I was you know with big groups all the time going to different places always having to introduce myself so I found out in a great way that um, hazelnut is huge here I mean everyone knows Nutella that's from Italy and if you go to any of the gelato places and I'm a huge gelato fan Nutella flavor is everywhere hazelnut flavor so I kind of ended up 
picking up the name. So I'd say, mi chiamo Hazel, come nocciola. So like hazelnut. So I kind of ended up picking up the name nocciola. Oh, I love it. I love hazelnuts. <laughs> I love Nutella and I love ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> How do you find it being a full-time artist? Do you find it quite stressful maybe not having the stability of a regular paycheck? I, when you say it like that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, it's something clicked when I was talking with a client about um, creating some digital artwork for them. I was kind of telling them a bit of the backstory of living in different places. And they were kind of saying, oh, so you, you've been freelance for ages. And I was like, oh, yeah, I, I kind of have. Because as I've gone along, I've picked up different jobs. So I was a bauble decorator for a month in Australia before Christmas. And I did kind of event jobs. And so everywhere I've kind of picked what my strengths were in something and tried to find work in it. So even before doing the artwork, I was freelancing. So kind of when I framed it that way, it didn't it didn't seem as stressful. It sometimes does when you talk to other people because they have that, you know, full time income, always know where the money's coming from, always know where the work's coming from. So I don't feel stressed, but sometimes, yeah. (laughs) But I think my my curiosity and interest and drive keeps it okay. And, you know, I always know if it gets to a point where I'm not sure and I I need I need money or I need something, then I can always fall back on one of my other skills. But I I like pursuing my passions. So I've got that drive and determination to find a way. And, you know, and talking of like, you know, pursuing your passions and you're known as, you know, Hazel, the creative explorer and creativity. I think sometimes people think you've either got it or you haven't. Um, I don't necessarily think that's true. I think everybody's got creativity in them. But I'd love for you to maybe share your tips about how people can get more creative whether that's being more creative in their adventures and in more creative in how they explore more creative in how they look at the world you know what would your advice and tips be I absolutely agree with you I think everyone is creative and it's just how you label yourself or because somebody's persuaded you out of it when you were younger um, I mean, one of my favourite quotes is Pablo Picasso, everyone's an artist when they're born. It's just staying an artist when you grow up. I don't know if I've said that right, but you get the idea. And um, there is so many different ways to be creative. And you might like this, actually. I've, I just found out the other week that it's the same part of the brain that we use for exercise is the same part of the brain we use for creativity. And so we have those muscles and we've just got to use them. So it's all to do with practice. You know, if you're a runner, you can't just go out and run a marathon if you've never run anything before. You have to practice, put in the time and develop. And the same with creativity. To be creative, you don't have to draw. You don't have to paint. You don't have to be an artist in what we, you know, traditionally say an artist is. You can use your creativity in all different kinds of ways. So you could be creative with how you explore, you know, or how you run. You know, sometime one time I went for a run to get the milk. So that it's like, you know, you're thinking of different ways that you can be creative. And I think that's what I really want to inspire in people to be more creative, not just with the way they explore, but their path in life. You don't have to follow this exact template that other people have put out in front of you. If you have something that you're interested in, learn more about it and see how you can create your path to go that way as well. And yeah, for me, it's curiosity and amazement. Like sometimes when I'm doing creative work, you can get in a bit of a lull, but then I'll go out for a run and I'll be like, wow, the world is amazing. Look at that tree. Look at that flower. Look at that connection of that person talking to that person. And I really just think it's being aware of how you can use your creativity and what creativity is to you. So don't label yourself as not creative because you don't paint or draw. You might be creative in a completely different way, but part of creativity is kind of 
getting across your vision of how you see the world so you could be an amazing storyteller but it's yeah when I was a trip manager in Italy there's I was so amazed all the time by everything in Italy that I might be telling them a story about something and then I would see the colors of the sunset out the back of the the window and the coach and I'd be like wait a minute everyone look at that sunset because look at it in the moment like really appreciate and be open and aware of what's around you one thing it makes me think about when we when you talk about creativity and, and sort of linking it to sort of adventure and challenge is almost like the creativity and training like making your training exciting and new and mixing it up but I always remember I can't remember who who shared this on the podcast I think it might have been Ali Young who her way of making her 20 mile run sort of different and new and giving it sort of purpose was to you know she had a a letter that needed to be posted and instead of posting the letter she ran and hand delivered the letter you know it was a 20 mile run 10 miles there 10 miles back but that to me is creativity in your training and it's figuring out how you can make it work for you and mixing those passions and those interests and and we've actually collaborated together and for those of people who are in the Liverpool neck of the woods they'll be able to see an awesome tough girl mural but do you just want to share a little bit more about maybe how like the idea and the, the obviously I'm the inspiration but yeah, <laughs> but like a little bit more about you know the podcast and the idea and you know I suppose how it sort of evolved yeah so I've uh, actually a friend recommended the podcast to me a few years ago a fellow kind of adventurer and she said oh I think you'd love this podcast so I've been listening for ages and I'm always so inspired by women in my work like most of my work is women either adventuring or embracing the moment or following their passion and so I was listening and I contacted you because I really think that you know hearing all of these different stories from women who create adventures in their own way is so inspiring and it is that thing of hearing someone else's story and passing it on to someone else that I really wanted to get across so then contacting you and talking about it more of how we could translate what you're doing with the Tough Girl podcast transferring that into imagery we went from there so obviously you being in between adventures based in Liverpool wanted to create something there and then translate kind of the inspiration and vision of how you're projecting other people's voices and then it's others hearing it that then grows the ideas in their mind to then create their own adventure and how it kind of passes on from woman to woman, from generation to generation, but you have to put your voice out there and project and tell your story to inspire others. Absolutely. And it is incredible. Absolutely amazing. So you can actually see, um, if you can't see it in real life in Liverpool, I know that I've shared it on my Instagram, you've shared it on your Instagram. You've also yeah. created a video on YouTube. But Hazel, do you want to share your social media links and where people can find you online and connect with you and see your artwork and the other amazing murals that you've, that you've done? I mean, they are absolutely beautiful and so, so incredible. Yeah, so I have my Instagram, so I share on there all of the artwork, including the Tough Girl mural, so that'll be on Natrola the Drawer. And then I share my adventures, so running, swimming, hiking are kind of the main adventures, but you never know what other ones will come along. And that's on Natrola the Explorer. And I have a YouTube channel, and it's quite new, so um, it's all of the murals that I've been doing lately, and kind of trying to inspire you to think creatively so I do weekly videos on there every Sunday and that's under Nochola the Drawer and I have my website which is www.nochola the Drawer and if you don't know how to spell it you just google hazelnut in Italian yay <laughs> and so you're in Italy at the moment for the next couple of months or so what are your plans for have you have you got any plans for 2022 at the moment, I'm, st- I'm still thinking in this year. So 2021, um, my challenge for this year is to do a 27-kilometre run around Sorrento in Italy. So it's uh, called Panorama. So there's lots of a lot of, a big, massive hill for the first 10K, basically. But it's um, a beautiful area down here. And so I really want to have... For me, I go for the adventures that have the best views, I think. So that's kind of the end of this year. And I will be looking to move 
to another country to be decided. Um, for me, I spent kind of the whole pandemic back in the UK, but there's, yeah, things coming along with illustration and moving to another country in 2022. Awesome. Absolutely amazing stuff. And Hayes, I'd love for you to have the final words, final words for women out there who want to get creative, who want to explore more. Apart from saying, just do it, what would be your top tips? My top tip would be create your own path. Use others as inspiration and hear stories and learn about the adventures, read books. But don't try to recreate exactly someone else's adventure. Find what sparks the joy in you and then follow that 100 percent, hazel thank you so much for being a creative explorer thank you for collaborating with me on the mural and it's amazing to get you on the tough girl podcast to share more about your passion for experiences for adventure and also your joy for life it's been absolutely inspiring talking to you thank you <laughs> Hey Tribe, I hope you enjoyed that episode with Hazel, what an absolute inspiration. So as we mentioned during that podcast episode, me and Hazel have actually collaborated and worked together on this incredible mural, mural, I always say that word wrong, mural in um, in Liverpool, which is uh, very close to my neck of the woods where I live. So I'm sort of over on the Wirral and Liverpool is about 30 minutes away from me. So it's in the northwest of England. One of the things I just wanted to highlight very quickly is that Hazel has an incredible YouTube channel. It's called Nochella the drawer I think I pronounced that right and she's actually got this incredible it's about a 10 minute video of the the idea the creative process behind it so you can go and watch that to see how she came up with the design how it all came about and what the finished product actually looked like so the title of the youtube video is painting an inspiring mural in liverpool to empower women to adventure I'm just going to read a little bit more about what Hazel wrote about it. In this week's video, I head to Liverpool and create a mural in the city centre that is inspired by the Tough Girl Challenges podcast. See the process of creating the mural on the streets and hear from Sarah Williams all about Tough Girl Challenge. This mural was created to amplify the message that women need to share their stories of adventure and challenges to empower and inspire other women. I worked with Sarah to create a design that translated her message from the Tough Girl podcast into something visual we could take it to the streets, increasing the number of female role models in the media who adventure and complete challenges. I would love to know if you decide to start your own challenge and if this inspires you. There's already so many lovely, lovely comments on the video. I'm just going to read a few of them out as well. So Roberto says, when I first saw that you were using black as a background color, I was actually surprised, but the final result is amazing and the message you are sharing is incredible. Well done. This video should get thousands or tens of thousands of views. Come on guys and especially girls, share it and share this positive message. Chelsea says, I love watching your process when you do a big mural. At first, I'm baffled how it's going to work out and then it all comes together to be amazing. Samantha wrote, love watching you create something so amazing and as always, you are super inspiring. Love the message you are always portraying. Christine wrote, your best yet. You make it look easy, but I'm sure it's not. And I wrote, thank you so much. It's amazing to be able to watch how the mural came to life. It's so awesome. It's so awesome. And I'm so glad we got to work together. Kiss, kiss, kiss. So if you are on YouTube, then please do go and visit Nochella, the drawer's channel. I'm also on YouTube as well at Tough Girl Challenges. And you can see more of the UK Tough Girl adventure series, vlog series, which is being shared and promoted now. So new episodes are being released on the YouTube channel every Wednesday and every Friday at 7am UK time. So the first first uh, set of videos coming out are related to the walk around the Isle of Anglesey, the Anglesey Coastal Path, which I did with Alex Mason in August last year. And then the next series after that is going to be the South Downs Way, followed by the Pilgrim's Way, and then the West Highland Way, then Climbing Ben Nevis, and then the final set of videos will be on the Great Glen Way. So that's every Wednesday and Friday. So I'd love it if you could subscribe, check out the vlogs, see what you think. These are all being edited by Sharon Evans, my new video editor who I'm working with. She's based over in New Zealand and she's known as the Free Wheeling Kiwi. All of her links are in the YouTube section as well. But if, by the way, if you're brand new to the Tough Girl podcast and are thinking, 
who is Sarah? What is she doing? Like, oh my goodness, I have no idea. Um, then A, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate you. My name is Sarah Williams. I'm the host of the Tough Girl podcast and everything that you need to know can be found on the website, toughgirlchallenges.com. So please do go and check it out. The episodes of the podcast go live every Tuesday and Thursday at 7am UK time. So basically there is content coming out for me on a Monday. You get a motivational Monday post that's normally done through sort of Facebook and Instagram. Tuesday, new podcast episode. Wednesday, new vlog episode. Thursday, new podcast episode. Friday, new vlog episode. Saturday, Sunday, it's when you go off and do your own awesome adventures and challenges. And then Monday, we're back to Motivational Monday. I also connect a lot with women in the Tough Girl Tribe, which is my closed Facebook community. If you're a woman and you want to connect and join us, then you need to sign up as a patron. So please visit Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com forward slash Tough Girl Podcast. So becoming a patron is how I fund the running costs, how I afford to, to, to pay to create this. So although the podcast episodes are free, it does cost a lot of time and money to produce this content. So all of the patrons, thank you so much for your ongoing support. It really does mean the world to me and it is making a difference. It's helping to increase the amount of female role models in the media. Thank you so much. I will be back with you next Tuesday. All that's left for me to say is wherever you are, whatever you are doing, give it your all, give it 110%, get after it, go for it, Believe in yourself because I believe in you. Take care, lots of love, and I will speak to you soon. Bye. Bye.